Hello and welcome to this video series on using Maxim's Max32 630 Featherboard to drive an OLED display. Now in this video, Greg, one of Maxim's applications engineers, will show you the hardware and software tools you need to get started and how to use the software drivers to get information onto the screen. In this first part, Greg will show you how to select and configure the hardware components you need for the project. Here's Greg. Well, to find more ideas and see what this board is capable of, a great starting point is to follow the URL that's printed on the side of the card included with the board. Or you can just scan the QR code that's also printed on the card. When you follow this link, it will take you to the embed page for this platform. Here, you'll find a host of information on the board and a bunch of links to additional information. This has the pinout details as well as more details on the peripherals that are available on this board. Also, near the top of the page, hidden in the text, you'll find a link to the Max32630 FTHR Apps Wiki page. If you follow this link, it will take you to some more information and some additional example applications. Also noted on here, you'll see a comment about the Autofruit Featherwing compatibility. This board was designed to be compatible with Autofruit's Feather series of boards so that it can take advantage of their Feather Wings, which are little add-on boards, peripheral boards, that give you the ability to easily add more features to the board. One of the boards you'll see listed here is the Autofruit uh, OLED, Featherwing OLED board. And if we follow the component page, you'll see here we have an example program and a library that you can use with this board. It's also got a link to the data sheet, as well as a link with where to, to purchase the board. But before we dive into this board, let's learn a little bit more about this Autofruit Feather series of boards. If we go back to the main page, you'll see there's also some comments about these boards in a couple links. If we click on the peripheral wings, <clears throat> this will take us directly to the page that lists a variety of different peripheral wings that the Autofruit compatible with these Feather series of boards. Uh, things to give you the ability to prototype, data logging, displays, more expansion boards, and a whole host of things just ready to be plugged into your board. If we drill down into the uh, OLED board, you'll see they, Autofruit does a great job providing documentation for how to use these boards. And another thing you might want to notice is that these boards come with the pins mounted or unmounted. This is done intentionally because it's not always clear how you'll want to mount these boards. So to make them the most flexible, they leave the headers detached so that you can attach them yourselves as you wish. Let me tell you, it's a lot easier to install these headers than it is to remove them. So I personally appreciate the flexibility they provide. But this does bring us to another point. Um, if we go into the back in the Autofruit page to their Feather Boards page, you'll notice in addition to boards and wings, they also have accessories. Let's look at the accessories they're offering for these Feather Boards. Here you'll see a little bit more detail about why they chose not to install and why we choose not to install the header pins. You'll see that there's a whole variety of different um, headers that you can install. There's header sockets or header pins um, and you get to choose from long tails for stacking or short tails for more compact applications. If you're not sure how you're going to use this board, I'd probably suggest going with the stacking headers as these will give you the ability to plug into a breadboard as well as attach feather wings on the top side of the board. So, 
when you go to order your Featherwing OLED board, be sure to order some uh, he the your. Be sure to order your favorite headers to go with it. Here you can see some of the pin options in more detail. You can see we've got basic headers, the low profile socket headers, and the stacking socket headers. This is the empty board. This is a board with the low profile headers on it. And you can see when you attach the display to this board, it makes a nice smaller package so that you can put it in an enclosure easier. But for this demo, we're actually going to use a board in the stacking headers that's been these are nice because you can mount them in a breadboard, which we'll use to attach some additional components. So that's the hardware story. Now in the next video in the series, Greg will show you how to get the software running so that you can build your first project for the Max 32630 Featherboard with the OLED display module. See you then.